Take Studio. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of MCTV News. I'm your host, Dylan Weiss. And I'm Will Compo. In today's episode, reporter Avery Pelche brings us a piece on the one act play. Skills competitors Brielle Windsor and Ella Bosno collaborated with one another to bring us their skills video. Reporter Aiden Chorney updates us on the status of the annual bike trip, and reporter, er, and reporter Bree Farrow takes us to the GSA club. But first, here's our top story. At the beginning of our school year, our staff list was subjected to a wide variety of changes. One of these changes involved our administrative team. Reporter Sophia Shavoka brings an expose on our new principal, Mr. Damon Clayton. At the beginning of the school year, MCHS welcomed many new faculty members, including our principal, Mr. Damon Clayton. Being an administrator here at Morinville Community High School has been an excellent experience. I started my career here over 25 years ago, so this is kind of coming full circle. Having been here before, Mr. Clayton has been able to experience our school from multiple perspectives and time frames, and he works hard to make our school a successful place. Mr. Clayton is a very hard worker. Um, he's responsible for a lot of things in the building. He definitely looks after discipline at the school. Um, and just kind of supporting all of us, the teachers, the vice principal, the support staff. Many students would agree that Mr. Clayton may come across as scary or strict, but he's very kind once you get to know him. He's a little bit like Mr. Eistetter. Sometimes when you look at them, you think they're very serious, and some kids sometimes are a little bit scared of them, and they don't really realize they're actually big teddy bears. He sometimes appears to be a little bit gruff and grumpy. He's actually pretty, uh, pretty kind, a teddy bear maybe. I'm strict but I also think I'm fair. What students may not know about Mr. Clayton is that he loves sports, the outdoors, and fitness. I'm very active. I do lots of crazy fitness type of things. I've run a couple of Ironman triathlons. I do extremely long bike rides and any backcountry hiking that I can find that I'm not too sure if I'm going to get to the end of alive, those are the things I like to do. For Mrs. Cormier and Mrs. Christensen, getting to know Mr. Clayton has been a hilarious and worthwhile experience. Can I say that he likes to boss me and Mrs. Cormier around? Is that allowed? I think that's his primary job, <laughs> to boss us around. He is um, notorious for losing things. So I don't know if that's what he does around the school, but I'm constantly reminding him of when he needs to, where he needs to find his keys or his glasses or his book. But he always, he always, always blames me. <laughs> Mr. Clayton has been a refreshing addition to the school, and he continues to work hard to encourage our students. For MCTV News, Sophia Shavoka reporting. Welcome back. With over the past couple of days bringing us warmth and fairer weather, Albertans have been praying that it's here to stay. Here to tell us if this week is blessing us with these conditions is our very own in-studio meteorologist, Jillian Andrews. Thanks, Will. Let's take a look at our national forecast. So it looks like up in Whitehorse, it's partly cloudy with a high of 7. Yellowknife is also partly cl cloudy with a high of 13. Vancouver is a bit warmer with a high of 14 and partly cloudy again. Regina, partly cloudy with a high of 13. Winnipeg, a high of 20, partly cloudy. And Toronto, a high of 18, partly cloudy. Let's take a look at the east. On east, we have Montreal with fully cloudy at 13. Halifax, 14, with mainly cloudy. St. John's, even cloudier at 9. And Iqaluit at negative 1, with partly cloudy. Let's take a look at our provincial forecast. Ooh, looks like we got some change in weather out here. High level, we have a high of 18, partly cloudy. Fort McMurray is all sun with a high of 19. Looking more to our west coast, it looks like Grand Prairie, Jasper, and Banff are all looking for thunderstorms with Grand Prairie at 17, Jasper at 9, Banff at 10. Also looking at Edmonton, it looks like we're looking for some thunder showers with a high of 16. Red Deer is all cloudy with a high of 13. Calgary, a high of 12 with mainly cloudy. And Medicine Hat with partly cloudy at 16. Let's take a look at our current conditions. 
So our current conditions are currently at a high of 17 degrees with wind at four kilometers an hour southeast. The relative humidity is 61%. The sunrise today was at 5.39 a.m. and the sunset will be at 9.21 p.m. Looking at our seven day forecast, it seems like there's lots of sun and warmth. Thursday and Friday with mainly sun with 20 and 23 as our highs. Saturday and Sunday with even more sun. Saturday with a high of 25 and a low of 10. Sunday with a high of 27 and a low of 11. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday are the high 20s. Super exciting to finally be warm. With 27 high on Monday and a low of 10. Tuesday with a high of 29 and a low of 12. And Wednesday with a high of 24 and 13. That's everything. Back to you, Will. Thanks, Jillian. Coming up, the MCHS Drama Llamas went to the One Act Festival to perform a student-directed act and came in second place. Reporter Avery Pelche brings us this piece. The One Act Theatre Festival is an opportunity for high school drama programs across Alberta to engage in the arts competitively. This year, it was grade 12 student Clara Wessel who stepped into the shoes of director and took on the challenges of producing the show One Lane Bridge for the festival. Um, I kind of got my first little taste of directing in uh, drama class last semester as a drama 30 and it just was so fun and I really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed kind of getting to see that side of drama. Some of the challenges of the show was definitely the trying to get the right message across because this show has like a lot of different interpretations so making sure that the audience got what we wanted to interpret was definitely the most difficult part. I mean, I can't drive, so playing someone who drives was pretty hard. <laughs> I guess he's a pretty emotional character, especially near the end, and I haven't really done that before, so that was pretty challenging. Going into it, I didn't really know exactly what to expect, but it came, challenges came in many different forms, such as just, you know, barriers between my visions versus, you know, the actors, um, and just, working with every individual and you know their needs and everything their set things prop issues and stuff little things that we didn't think about until the very last minute before the festival the cast had the chance to do a friends and family performance where they held a bake sale and received feedback from audience members that helped them to put the final touches on their show before the big competition helped because we got a lot of comments on what we could really improve we got a lot of comments on our jacket switch it was something we came up on this like an hour before the show happened, so it was really great that we got so many comments off of it. MCHS took its first trip to the festival in 2019 with the play's tracks and digging up the boys, and in the words of drama teacher Vanessa King, accidentally won everything. This year, One Lane Bridge boasted similar success, bringing home seven awards total. Our production won uh, two awards for acting, one for program design and one for directing. And we also got um, outstanding achievement for ensemble, outstanding achievement for production design, and then we um, got outstanding achievement runner-up. So we came second place in the festival, which was really, really great. For MCTV News, Avery Pelche reporting. Here are your school announcements for Wednesday, May the 10th. As the weather is warming up, back at track and field is starting once again. Monday and Wednesdays are for sprinters and distance runners. And for practices on Tuesdays and Thursdays, be prepared for shot put, discus, and javelin throwing. See Mr. Lissard for more information. Attention Legally Blonde cast members. If you are planning on attending the ATVC gala, please bring your money as soon as possible. Tickets will be $25. Please see Ms. King for more information. Attention students from Alexander. Interested in summer employment? See Ms. McDonald and Student Services for more information. For these and all other school information, keep connected by listening to the daily announcements, logging on to the school's website at www.mchs.gsacred.ab.ca, or by following the school on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. As well, be, to subscribe, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by searching MCTV Morinville. Up, reporters Ella Boisno and Brielle Windsor partnered up to create a provincial skills video. Our world is constantly changing and evolving. New technological advancements are developed every day. These changes affect all aspects of our lives, including the workforce. As automation and artificial intelligence continue to become more prominent, it is hard to help but wonder, why do the skilled trades still hold value? Skilled trades are important because society relies on tradespeople. Skilled trades are 
the backbone of, of the province as I see it. We have so many jobs to offer. When you look at the world around us, most of that is taken care of by skilled trades. Society relies on skilled trades and there is many ways they can become more efficient through the use of technology. Artificial intelligence offers many opportunities which make accepting technological advances worthwhile. We need to understand what technology is out there, embrace it. But I think it's something that really can impact our, our work going forward. Having that extra automation component I think really brings a lot of interest. More opportunity um, to be creative and, and utilize that kind of technology for everything. It will enhance the quality of the work but mostly it will enhance the, the speed of the work. Though automation provides a multitude of benefits, some worry we are becoming too reliant on technology. Um, it's easier to automate, which I think makes some people fearful, you know, of uh, what, what their job might look like. And I don't think it has the thought that a human can put into making a great design, a great idea. When it comes to the trades, there is a balance to be found between producing artificially made and handcrafted products. I think most people are more, more interested in getting a high quality product than they are in knowing where uh, or who did it. Like if you're looking for something that needs repetition and precision, automation or a machine would be better at doing that. If you need something that is creative, I would say human would be better at that. As technology continues to evolve every day, change is the only constant. Though AI and automation are becoming more popular, there continues to be a need for manual work, and trade industries are still highly valued. Welcome back. Here with all the recent sports updates, including the results of some second-round NHL playoff games and MLB and NBA briefs, is our very own sports analyst, report, sports reporter, Sophia Shavoka. Thanks, Will. In the NHL last night, the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs continued. The Carolina Hurricanes brought the storm, beating the New Jersey Devils 6-1, and the Dallas Stars shone bright with a 6-3 victory against the Seattle Kraken. This evening, our home team plays their fourth game against the Vegas Golden Knights, and we hope to secure a victory. Go Oilers! All right, <laughs> turning to the NBA playoffs, it's time for the semifinals. The Philadelphia 76ers beat the Celtics 115-103, and the Phoenix Suns were burnt by the Denver Nuggets with a score of 118-102. In the MLB, the Philadelphia Phillies beat the Blue Jays 8-4, the San Francisco Giants stomped on the Washington Nationals with a 4-1 victory, the Colorado Rockies brought the Boulders with a landslide victory of 10-1 against the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the San Diego Padres beat the Minnesota Twins 6-1, and the Los Angeles Dodgers beat the Brewers 6-2. Up next is a piece on the cancellation of the bike trip. The bike trip is an annual tradition here at MCHS, but this year it had to be canceled just before it took place. Reporter Aiden Shorney brings us the full scoop. At summer break, kids get excited for the bike trip where you get a ride inside of the Rocky Mountains and see nature. But due to the lack of participants, the trip has been canceled and this has left people who were planning on going disappointed. So I wanted to ask people why they were so excited for the bike trip and the benefits of going on the trip. So we've been uh, running the bike trip uh, at MCHS ever since the school opened. The bike trip actually started at Primo as a Phys Ed 30 trip, and it allows students to ride in the Rocky Mountains for three days. Uh, currently, the trip goes from Lake Louise to Jasper, so we cycle about 210 kilometers over three days, and it is open to any student that's currently enrolled at MCHS. For the bike trip, I definitely look forward to the overall experience of it, being able to see all the mountains. The physical aspect of it, I would say, is challenging, but the feeling that I got specifically, like overcoming it and like doing the hard work that it took, I think was very nice. Um, it definitely makes you kind of feel good about yourself and proud that you got to do what you do. Well, I really enjoy the bike trip. I mean, this is my 25th time that I've done the bike trip. I've been doing the bike trip since 1997. Um, it is an incredible challenge for the students and I love to be able to see the kids who challenge themselves and have to do it for the first time as, as much as I like to see kids who've gone, gone before and are, are, are doing it again to kind of maybe do better than they did the previous year. But I think as far as one of the trips that the school offers, it's probably one of the best trips that we do offer just because of the amazing challenge. What are the exciting and challenging parts about the bike trip? Well, I mean, if you love the mountains, it's obviously an incredible uh, opportunity to spend three days in the mountains. But I think it's, um, uh, to me, it's always about that challenge. Those kids that are going on, a lot of the kids maybe are a little, maybe a little scared if they think, oh, my God, can I cycle 210 kilometers or not? And, um, but I mean, 
the challenge aside, I mean, the, the, the scenery, the beauty, cycling down the highway as opposed to riding down the highway in a car is a totally different experience. Uh, you get to see all sorts of little things on the side of the road that normally you'd whiz by and not really get a chance to see and opportunities to see wildlife up close and you're, you're kind of more one with nature when you're riding down that highway on a bike than when you're driving through in an automobile or in a car. I look, I look forward to the memories that I get to make, the kind of being able to tell people that I just biked over 200 kilometers along the mountains is something super cool. Um, and also being able to say that like yeah like I physically did that and then mentally doing it I think is something you know this year if we get to go on it it's something I'm looking forward to really doing because last year when it came to ha when I had some physical struggles doing the trip I think I got really down on myself mentally and I think this year you know or next year whenever I get to do it next um, I'm kind of looking forward to being able to change my mindset and just have much more of a positive attitude going into it and just like not giving up when I think I can't do it or when I can. It is sad to see the cancellation of the bike trip. We will hope next year will be better and we'll be able to go on the annual bike trip. Thank you for watching. This is Aiden Chorney reporting. Welcome back. With this May bringing Mental Health Awareness Month, we wish to inform the MCHS student body about what mental health encompasses and how it affects each and every one of us daily. To aid in our quest for awareness is our G Sacred Voice Specialist, Ms. Marina Casamant. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So my first question for you today is, what is Mental Health Awareness Month? So Mental Health Awareness Month is essentially uh, the month of May, and it's just a time that we take to kind of look at how is our country dealing with mental health currently, what are the current mental health trends, uh, as well as how can we offer support to those who are currently dealing with mental health issues or crises, uh, and also how can we kind of uh, encourage our government to further look into mental health services and supports for people in our communities. Thank you. Uh, why might somebody experience mental health issues? There's a lot of different reasons why somebody might experience mental health issues. Uh, big ones are things like genetics. Uh, if you have a family member that is experiencing mental health I issues or mental illness, chances are you as a child, a sibling, uh, a nephew or niece of that person might also experience uh, those mental illnesses as well. But also just like our environments, if we're growing up in really high stress environments, if we're facing lots of stress uh, at our workplace as a student, um, uh, if we're facing things like bullying, those can all impact our mental health. Uh, really, lots of aspects of our lives can impact our mental health. Thank you. And what could be categorized within the term of mental health? Uh, well, there's mental health and mental illness, and they, they kind of hold hands, but they're also they're two different things. Uh, mental health is just like, how do we think, feel, and behave? about ourselves so it's like how do we see the world and how do we see ourselves reflected in that world and then there's mental illness which is the actual illness that can really impact the way that we see the world as well um, and then mental illness can be like diagnosed by a psychiatrist or a psychologist whereas everybody experiences mental health but no not everyone will experience mental illness thank you that makes sense uh what are some possible coping strategies for things such as like mental illnesses uh, there's lots. Uh, so I usually try to encourage positive coping strategies. Uh, sometimes people, when they uh, experience things like really harsh mental health issues or mental illnesses, there tends to be um, kind of a tendency to turn towards negative coping strategies, which might include alcohol, drugs, as those kind of temporarily reduce any pain that we might be feeling as a result of that mental health issue. Um, but when we talk about positive coping strategies, those are things that don't harm us in the long run, uh, that kind of encourage us to seek help and get better. So there's, uh, personally, I use like listening to music uh, is a huge one that I also encourage for young people. Uh, I also encourage exercise as that um, kind of gives us those feel good uh, reactions in our brain and those feel good chemicals in our brain as well. Um, things like talking to somebody. A lot of times people feel ashamed to talk to others about what they're going through, but having uh, somebody maybe understand what you're going through and kind of support you in that is also a huge, great strategy. So those are the big three that I recommend to others. Thank you. And what is the importance with managing mental health? Uh, well, mental health impacts you in every aspect of your life, right? So if we're not managing it, if we're kind of putting it to the wayside, um, it's almost like if you break your leg, if you don't go to a doctor, if you don't get a cast put on it, you're limping around and you're making your leg worse. That leg is never going to heal. Uh, same thing with our mental health. We usually don't look at it, uh, kind of comparing it to like a physical condition, but it's the same thing. If we let it go untreated, uh, if we're starting to feel symptoms of depression per se, and we're like, it'll go away on its own. 
we might slowly start to see the symptoms get worse. Maybe we are having a hard time getting out of bed. Maybe we are isolating ourselves. Um, maybe we can't focus on schoolwork. Um, and the more we put it off, the more the symptoms get worse and worse. That's why it's important when you notice these things happening to you to really catch it and be like, how can I make this better? Who do I need to go talk to? What are supports out there for me? So then it doesn't progress into getting so bad, right? Yeah, and you mentioned that you're, or that there's often a stigma around seeking help. Is there any, like, how could we help fix with removing the stigma? Yeah, that's something I'm really passionate about, actually. Uh, the biggest thing, uh, I always like to encourage people to talk about it. Even if you're not experiencing a mental health issue, talk about mental health. Uh, the more there's a conversation around it, the more normalized it becomes in people's brains that it's not just a select group of people that experience mental health issues or mental illness, anyone can experience these issues. Um, so talk about it, but also educating yourself, taking those steps to find uh, whether it's scientific articles or uh, reputable creators on things like TikTok who are teaching about these different uh, aspects of mental health or mental illness, really getting out there and seeing what the information is uh, can really debunk a lot of these myths that we might have in our head, whether it's about mental health as a whole or specific mental illnesses. So those are my best ones. Thank you. Thank you for your, your wisdom. And coming up next, reporter Bree Farrow dove into the recently established GSA club in order to discover what their interests, goals, and daily activities involve. The GSA club is a group focused on promoting awareness about the LGBTQ plus community and providing a safe space for queer youth and allies. It consists of mostly students with a few teachers supervising and helping organize events and club meetings. Uh, GSA is a, it means the Gay Straight Alliance Club, and it's basically for those who are like queer or supportive of it. The goals would be to uh, awareness of um, different people in our school, um, so kind of um, recognizing differences and uh, having a safe space for students to just be themselves. The club gathers weekly in the art room to discuss plans, organize activities, and just hang out with people with similar interests and experiences. It is always welcome to new members. Uh, you can talk to Ms. Richopo or Rowan, and if you, you can just walk in at any time if you want to join an art room on that stage. GSA President Ro Weinmeyer started the club in early February with hopes of providing LGBTQ plus and supporting students with a safe space during lunch hours to chat and find a community within the school. Now they are planning events like craft sales and even attending parades. We are planning on doing a craft sale at some point and we're thinking about bake sales and especially during Pride Month look out for that kind of thing because we're going to try to do a lot for Pride Month. This is a dedicated team looking to improve the school environment and create a safe space for all students. With plans to host sales and events, be sure to look out for this group in the very near future. This is Brianna Farrow reporting for MCTV News. And that's it for another episode of MCTV News. Join us for our next episode showcasing pieces on Skills Alberta, Waitu Karate, where some of the previous MCTV alumni are now, the MCHS School Library, and an expansion on our faculty expose series featuring Ms. Wright. Additionally, stay tuned for an in-studio interview with a special guest, as well as your weekly weather update and sports recap. So, it's your birthday today, right? It do be my birthday. Yeah, what are you going to do for your birthday? Honestly, I'm probably just going to go home and play games with the boys. Sick. And so, maybe eat ice cream cake, because I like ice cream cake. Yeah. Um, I, I like ice cream cake, too. <laughs> we'll, like, we'll share it. Yeah, we'll share the cake. Yeah. Yeah, sharing the cake's good. From all of us at MCTV News, I'm Will Campo. And I'm Dylan Weiss. Thanks for tuning in.